as the pinch of inflation and L. A. S. High gas prices cause many people to rethink where they live, I've been revisiting our decision to move away from the city. Four years ago, my husband, our two-year-old daughter, and I left from Los Angeles International Airport on one-way tickets to Madison, Wisconsin. We had careers, me an automotive manager, him an adjunct professor at UCLA. We owned a home in Mar Vista, with two dogs and a succulent garden. After 15 years, we had established hell, as our home. And then suddenly, it wasn't anymore. On a recent visit back, friends and strangers asked, is life better outside L? A. They all have oft-repeated mental exercises where they uproot to a Bend, Oregon, Boise, Idaho, or Austin, Texas, utopia where the ice lot is flow and traffic is non-existent. I stared blankly. Am I happier? Our old house in Mar Vista was listed for sale again by the new owners, so I really thought about it. Back then, my husband and I theorized that we could be more satisfied elsewhere. There were a few specific moments that pushed us to make the leap. First, we discovered a black widow's nest in the baby's room. Then, I had a panic attack in traffic on the 405. Finally, we learned of my dad's Parkinson's diagnosis. Was our theory true? Here's what I discovered leaving L for the Midwest to be closer to family. I thought we would fall in with old friends when we moved back to my home state, but we barely see them. Most are married with the Wisconsin requisite three children. They welcomed us home with open arms at first, but now we don't get together that often. Maybe it's their kids' grueling soccer schedules. At our stage, you make friends through your kids, and that's what we've done. Funny enough, most of our new friends are transplants too, from California or the East Coast, who made the same decision to seek a quieter life, so we feel right at home. In one downtown L car dealership I visited for work, 32 languages were spoken. In Madison, I once attended a meeting with four other white women named Sarah slash Sarah, we didn't want to raise our blonde daughter among only kids who look like her. So, we asked around and chose a neighborhood and a preschool with a relatively diverse racial and ethnic makeup. 